Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining us for another podcast. Today it's going to be me, Xander, and Mandy um, covering Dallas Buyers Club. So, um, it came out in 2013, directed by Jean-Marc Valli. Or Valli? I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I don't know, it's, it's kind of French. It is which just makes it more difficult to pronounce. Um, But yeah, so directed by him. um, It has a lot of different studios attached to it, but the top three build are Truth Entertainment, Voltage Pictures, and R2 Films. And they won a lot of awards. 85 in total with 81 nominations um additionally so you know it if you somehow missed it during award season that year this movie blew things up it cleaned things out <laughs> oh yeah uh mcconaughey and leto both won at academy awards uh global <laughs> globes and Screen Actors Guild um, for their respective performances. And uh, at the Academy, the hair and makeup team also won. So. Which, by the way, they only spent $250 on makeup for budget. So, I mean, (laughs) to win at the Academy for that, that's amazing. It really is um it's it's kind of insane like they did a really good job because most of the makeup in this film is incredibly subtle um but that subtlety just adds to the realism of it and i it they're they're truly truly skilled they just masters of their craft to pull it off Exactly, exactly. So, um, as I'm sure most of you guys know, this movie is following um, the pharmaceutical struggles during the AIDS crisis, um, specifically centered around Ron Woodruff in Texas. So, the movie presents him as being um, an extremely racist, homophobic, heterosexual, um, who is an electrician and a rodeo bookie, and just has sex with anyone and everyone um and very much into the drugs and the alcohol oh yeah like if it's if it's not terribly smart for you to be doing he probably did it uh and i you know i wasn't i wasn't prepared going into this movie for the the language um you know there's there's slurs in multiple places uh scattered throughout the movie he's truly truly deplorable when we meet him um and the fact that at the end you're you're kind of rooting for him says a lot about the story and about his character growth and I mean, obviously, this is about a real person, so you know it's it's some of of Ron's real growth as well. Um, but yeah, it it's just it's crazy. So you want to uh, take some of the story? Yeah. Uh... Well, it kind of starts with Ron being this 
you know, sets it up for him being this homophobic, like, country hick almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what really kicks off the story is that while he is on a construction site and, you know, calling his team idiots and stuff like that, he goes up to, like, live wire or something and gets electrocuted. And, of course, ends up in the hospital, which is, like, you know, the first 10 minutes of this movie, and you're immediately to the point where you get his HIV diagnosis. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, he has such a believable, instantaneous denial. Like, you can tell he does not understand. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's like, and he just goes straight into denial. And like, the next scene, he's back to sex, drugs, and hookers. Yeah, like, he, he, he almost experiences the denial and the anger at the same time, um, because he has an extremely visceral reaction to that news. Like, I would not have wanted to be the doctors in that room. No. (laughs) (laughs) Like, here's... Here's this crazy man who looks like he's about to just throw hands and you're having to give him bad news. Like, mm -mm, no, not considering the next words out of their, especially considering the next words out of their mouths were you've got about 30 days. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's when it really like reaches his his climax, and then he's just tumbling down a hill of pure anger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Until his energy runs out. But, um, but yeah, so it, it has, uh, it has a very, I can't think of a word that's not going to be a pun, so no pun (laughs) truly intended, but it has an electric start um from from the very first scene you're like okay all right a threesome that's how we're starting this movie and there's freaking like bull riding out there okay yeah why not and then he punches the cop to get out of it yeah like it it's just it's insane um so immediately sets the fact that this man has a completely wild life oh yeah there's there's no you know well maybe he was no he was crazy and everyone should know it <laughs> um but yeah so it, it it keeps the energy that it starts with um I didn't really feel like there were any points where the story dragged on. Um, And I didn't feel like there were any points where, you know, it it moved too quickly. Despite there being a couple of of montage scenes. um, Which are really difficult to do right. They did gen- well, though. They did. They did. Generally, a, a montage scene um, is, like, filler. It's like, eh, I don't really want to write this part, so I'm just going to... There you go. And, and it feels rushed. These montages felt... More like an info dump. Yeah. Yeah. And, like... It, I mean, his life is so crazy, even before his diagnosis, that I think the montages just work in tandem with his already manic energy. And that's yeah. why they don't feel rushed. But, um... Jared Leto's character, Rayon, uh, is introduced pretty quickly as well um and she is fantastic absolutely absolutely love her um outstanding performance by jared leto 
just understandably why he won so many awards. Oh yeah, for sure. Because there's not a single moment that I doubt that I, I I don't doubt his conviction. You know, it's just all right. This is what it is. This is who she is. Um, and that's that's pretty amazing. Um. Mm-hmm. And one thing to note, the the characters all refer to Rayon as he, but they'll do that while talking about sexual transition and surgeries and things like that. Cast interviews, the, the cast and crew are calling Rayon she. Um, so... I I found that I don't know it it I guess it was um just kind of a relief when I saw that the the casting crew were like oh no Rayon's a girl these characters just would not would not acknowledge that um because of who they are and that is very authentic I think. Very heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very good. Um, the, it, during, during his, like, post-diagnosis, um, like, banger, he, lets his friend know that he got that diagnosis and suddenly he finds that all his friends are no longer his friends they do not react well (laughs) not at all and he doesn't react to them not reacting well with any kind of grades no, but I mean, it immediately goes to like homophobic slurs and hate speech, so mm-hmm. it's understandable. Yeah, I would agree with that, but given his proclivity toward violence, anyway, yeah. I don't give him much, much grace there. Um, but yeah, so, he starts getting, like, snuck these, um, AZT pills, which were currently in trial, and... At the hospital that he was at. Yeah, um, so he manages to get to get some of those, and he's taking them like candy, basically. Um, Definitely above the recommended dose. Oh, yeah, and the recommended dose at that time was still killing people. Yeah. They just didn't know how to use it yet, so. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um... He... Uh, but he only ends up getting that supply for a couple of days before it runs out. Yeah, like it the the it's difficult to gauge how much time passed um because he met with the guy what three or four times on screen before the guy was like, "Hey, yeah. they're locked up." Well, I'm pretty um, sure it said on like day number 8 on like that little like pop-up thing before the scene. Mm, okay. So, yeah, he, um, he ends up collapsing right outside the hospital. At the hospital. Yeah. And, Luckily. Yeah. And when he comes to, <laughs> the two doctors, face to face doctor. you know, they're like, so, how have you Where'd been you getting get AZT? Because that's not allowed. You, you can't have that if you're not in the trial. That's not okay. It's illegal. Um, and you're taking way too much. Stop. <laughs> yeah. 
and they it, he refused to tell them, and so they yeah. walked off. Um, and Rayon starts talking to him because they're like roommates, and. He is incredibly abusive toward Rayon at first. Yeah, and... he makes it very clear he, he does not like him. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, she's just kind of like, okay, whatever. That's fine. You'll get over it. We're all in this together. Um, she's, she has a great attitude through the whole thing. Um, she doesn't deal with her stress and her grief very well. Um, because she's heavily involved in drugs and keeps getting high. But, she's an extremely empathic character. And I think it was a great choice to create yeah. her. Because without that compassionate foil, I don't know that I could have, I don't know that I could have tolerated Ron as long as I did while he was still homophobic. Because like I said, yeah. he was, he was deplorable. So having that. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. Having that queer, um, compassionate foil really helped because, one, he's, he's being his usual gruff, abusive self, but that's way better than being abusive simply because she's queer, you know? Like... It gets to a point where a lot of his bullying is, damn it, will you just take care of yourself? I don't want to babysit you. But I'm gonna. And and that's, that's a really interesting thing to see develop. Um, and they did it really well without rushing that either. Um, so... Anyway, when he can't get AZT, he goes to uh, Mexico because the orderly who's sneaking him the meds gave him... He's like, I can't get you anymore, but you can go here and they'll give you something else. Exactly. So he gets to Mexico and he sees this giant clinic and he's like, I want AZT. And the doctor's like, mm, are you trying to kill yourself? No? All right, then you're going to get off of that shit. You're going to get on DDC, peptide T, and a whole bunch of vitamins. And you're going to start feeling better, okay? And sure and enough. you're going to take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, you're, you're not going to be doing the drugs. You're not going to be doing the alcohol. You're not going to be having sex all over the place. Take care of yourself because you are in an extremely fragile state. And you will be pretty much for the rest of your life. And if you don't want that to be 30 days, take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. So, um... But Doctor's also pretty cool at the beginning because he immediately is in for, like, starting a smuggling ring to get these two patients in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Like, he clearly takes his... Um, his vow quite seriously, which is really nice. Um, so he, he kind of like talks Ron through how to smuggle the drugs, which makes me think he's done it before and lost his like, his, his, his go goat. Guy. Yeah. Um, but Ron gets, you know, stopped, and, uh, the He's FDA... He's dressed as a priest, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the, the FDA, like, come in, and they start talking to him, and they're like, you're a priest? And he's like, 
yes, I am. And he tells him he's very sick. He has cancer. This inordinate amount of drugs is a 90-day supply for him. And he takes 33 pills a day along with the protein shots. And the, this FDI guy is clearly not having any of his bullshit, but he can't hold him on anything. Because no. he does a very convincing job. Like, yeah. Yeah. McConaughey just immediately claims, oh no, cancer, it's for cancer. Mm hmm. Like, okay. I mean, we don't really have any more treatments for cancer than we do for HIV at this point, so I guess you, you do you, man. But we're going to keep a close eye on you. If you're selling this shit, we're going to take you down. So, yeah. he, uh... Because at the time, they could bring personal use drugs across borders. Mm-hmm. Just legal note there. Yeah. Personal drugs up to a 90-day supply. Um, and if they were controlled drugs they had to still have a prescription but they could have a prescription that was written out of the states yeah so um yeah he he gets the idea to create this buyer's club from some people up in new york right uh, yeah it was new york he was following a new york model yeah um which is basically you pay monthly club dues and then you can have all the drugs yeah. you want. Yeah. Hence Buyer's Club. Yes. Is that way he wasn't selling the drugs. He was selling the... We're just paying for a membership. Yeah. Which I don't think works anymore today. Um, but at the yeah. time, the FDA couldn't really do anything about it. Um, nope. Which is good, because the the buyers clubs were, like, monumental in organizing and figuring out and, and doing better research than the hospitals and pharmaceutical companies were doing at the time. Yeah. Because they actually had motivation. Um, so he gets caught when one of the doctors, um, Eve, who are running the trial, uh, comes looking for Rayon because she had changed her um, home address. Address. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Eve is, like, really pissed off because he's doing this behind the scenes, and now she understands why so many of her patients have been disappearing, and he gets her to actually... She's mostly pissed. Yeah. Pissed because... She's mostly pissed because the patients aren't being monitored properly this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so she's really concerned, especially, um, especially since he gave himself a heart attack by using too much of, I think it was the peptide tea. Um, and he's like, that was a dosage issue. That was my fault. I, I was already, you know, I was already not quite in the right state of mind. We've informed everyone the maximum dosage they should use. And frankly, that's as good as you would do, too. So, yeah, fuck off. He makes basically. it clear that he uses himself as the guinea pig first before he ever acts like a doctor by giving out these pills. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um,. He and, makes it very clear that he's done his research. Yeah, and, and he makes it very clear that even past the research, he takes it seriously enough that 
she was able to find notes on patients um, because if he didn't care, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble of making all those notes. Yeah. Because he just has files on each patient, just like a doctor's yeah. office would. Like, he gets very in-depth, very organized. He ends up having multiple employees. Like, it's this whole crazy thing. Um, like, he does his research. He puts the effort into it. He takes it seriously. Exactly. So, it just... He does a really good job of making sure that everyone who's in his in his club are going to be as safe, if not safer, um, compared to him. Yeah. And it, it shakes her a little bit because she realizes he, he is doing better. He looks better. You know, he's gaining weight back. This is doing something. And she had already been yeah. upset with the trial because they were pushing it through so fast. And she was concerned yeah. at the speed. So she starts, you know, suggesting... She also, initially makes, she also initially makes comments about how she doesn't necessarily trust the FDA processes and how it seems to be, like, viable. Mm-hmm. How yeah. fast they can push stuff through. Yeah. And She's they're... already wary of them. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and there is no real life Eve. There were plenty of doctors like her um, and nurses like her who. And that character was basically just a combination of, you know, hundreds of people exactly like that, just kind of to describe the character and give it life. Mm hmm. Basically, yeah. Um, and, uh, crap, what is her name? Why is her name not coming to my brain? Who? Oh. Jennifer Garner. <sighs> Jennifer Garner plays Eve. Um, I don't know why. Yes. Yeah, that, that was a total brain fart there. But, um, she does a <laughs> fantastic job. Um, and w one of the things that I love about Jennifer's acting just in general is that she plays a lot with nuance. Um, so she doesn't have exaggerated reactions. She has typically quite stoic, intense reactions to things. Um, but you can feel the clench of her muscles and the weight of her disappointed glare. And it's just, it's, it's really good. Um, because you can also... She does a good job. She does. And, and you can also watch her just kind of like melt the tension away once she realizes Rayon is safe and um, and yeah. things like that. So she's she's a really good advocate for the patients who are still in the program. Um, unfortunately, the board ends up it's clear yeah ends up it's clear she cares about the patients and not pushing the drug. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the hospital basically forced her to quit. Um, it, it was... Well, they asked her to resign, and she refused. <laughs> it, yeah. It, like, she was just like, I'm not doing it. You're gonna... Yeah. Yeah. Have to fire me. Yep. Because I'm not doing anything wrong. I am following the doctor's credo. You can go the fucko. So, <laughs> um... Yeah, it. She's great. Um, they. They end up having some issues, um, because the the FDA is really stamping down on importation or on imported drugs that are not approved yet. 
and uh, so Ron and um, some of his crew have to get really creative to um, to get to get everything sent in, um, and he struggles a good good amount. Um, and he he loses the uh, motel room, um, and ends up being gifted a house by two members of the club. And so he turns that house into his office. Been his like longtime patient. Yeah, like they were they were some of the first yeah, patients. It, it, it's a couple that had been with him from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. They're, um, and they were just like, a... we believe in the cause. We want you to have this for free. Yeah, yeah. And he's clearly touched by that moment, um, which is, is really nice to see because well, that's he's, good news. you know, yeah. Um, but it's really good. And it just, it keeps, you know, ramping up. Things keep happening. He and um, the other doctors, Savard, uh, and then the the FDA are just constantly at each other's throats. Um, and so he's having to think on his toes. Yeah, and for- he's constantly getting raided by... And he's constantly getting raided by, like, the FDA, the DEA, getting audited by the IRS. Like, he's just constantly dealing with problems. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, So he starts going into the support groups, um, passing out brochures on how um, toxic AZT was, and uh, and inviting them to join his buyers club, um, and then he uh, he's just he's just having a, a rough time of it uh, legally, but also um, just physically as well with the FDA cracking down on medication um he is starting to deteriorate again so he ends up suing the FDA to get his meds um and the case gets dismissed but uh everyone at the club and he just gets- they're all clapping for him when he gets back, and like we appreciate that you tried. Mhm. Yeah. So um, it's it's really good. Um. And Rayon mostly is just his sidekick and his um compassionate foil throughout the film, but. Um, there is a point where she, um, she visits her father, who refuses to accept her identity, um, but still clearly loves his child, just doesn't know how to reconcile that with what he believes. Um... And that that is better than one generally would have faced in that time frame, um, because it, generally parents were not supportive of a transition like that, um, and would even disown you. But he. He ends up when when she breaks down and tells him, you know, I'm dying. 
And I just want to do this one last thing for this guy who has helped me a lot. Um, and, and so the, the dad kind of breaks down. And you can tell the dad is super, super, like, affluent. Um, Brown wears, like, a male suit to go see him and has, you know, his hair bundled up as, as close as possible. Um, and so Rayon returns to Ron with an envelope full of money to help get more drugs to help people. Um, so Rayon goes back to Mexico. they had just gotten confiscated again, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Ron goes back to Mexico, and Rayon starts coughing up blood, ends up in the hospital, pretty much comatose, and is dead by the time Ron gets home. Um, and yeah, he finds like out. Ron didn't get a chance to say goodbye, and like when he didn't, nobody had told him when he got back. So like, mm -hmm. as soon as he found out and he got there, they're already packing up the room. Yeah, and he attacks Savard. And you just see him like instantly get pissed as soon as they oh, mention yeah. that they had tr put a little bit of AZT in his system. He immediately hunts down Savard and attacks him. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, and Savard is played by Dennis O'Hare, by the way. Uh, and Dr. Vass is Griffin Dunn. Um, I don't think we mentioned mentioned him earlier. Um, but, yeah, it, it's... There's a lot to this movie there's a lot that could be potentially triggering in this movie. Um, which I think anyone going into it kind of realizes that movie because does not hold back. Yeah, it, it, it was more than I expected. And I went into it expecting that it would, you know, cleave my heart and leave me sobbing. Um, but it the the intensity is there from scene one and does not really abate. They hold zero. Uh, it like punches. immediately puts you on edge and and it's just an emotional roller coaster from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah. So really, really good. Um the lighting in this movie uh was very strategic and very simple they did not use any lights that were not already in the scene or could not be added organically to the scene so um the set designers would sometimes like add a period appropriate lamp to give a room more more light but they did not have the traditional lighting. Um, it was all very, very natural lighting, which they did a wonderful, wonderful job with. Because watching it, I had no idea. It wasn't until we, we started the research that I, and I found mm -hmm. that, blew my freaking mind. Um, like all of their, like, all of their crew work was amazing. Oh yeah, they had you know it, this this film had kind of a cursed start. Um, there were tons of you know attempts and um, failures because it they started it in nineteen ninety two. So, I mean that's that's. 22 years that they were trying to get this movie made and Matthew McConaughey being like hey I want to do this was essentially the only reason that it, it got made 
Um, and I, I don't think there could have been a more perfect cast for this for this movie. I really don't. It's, they had the, a perfect cast. Again, I understand why they won so many awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they, they just character, like, development physically. Like, I mean, you can see them coming and going a little bit here and there. But, like, towards the end, like, especially with Rayon, you just see her deteriorating. And it, it's just mm-hmm. getting gaunt. And it's just... It breaks your heart. It, it really, does. it really does. And I mean, both Lido and McConaughey dropped to insane, insane weights. Um, like yeah, not McConaughey, healthy. Yeah, McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey ended up losing forty-seven pounds, and Lido ended up losing like thirty pounds. It, yeah. It's they were like sickly. Mm-hmm. And it is. Yeah, and the um, the shooting schedule for this this film was insane. So first of all, it was a twenty five day shoot, which is ridiculous for a feature film. Ridiculous. Yeah. No one does that. Um, but they kept the camera rolling from cut to cut. So, you know, if something golden happened while waiting for them to say action again, they caught it. So they didn't have to do reshoots. They didn't have to, um, you know, slog through a bunch of, of small sections. It was one organic thing. Everyone was constantly moving. There was no time to sit in your trailer and wait. And the cast loved it. Like, Mm. all of them have talked about how challenging and invigorating and wonderful that was. I'm sure they don't want it to be every single role they do, but... All three. Nice change of pace. Yeah, all three have said I would definitely do that again. Um, because it helped them live in their characters and live in that moment without without being method. Um, because that's all method acting is is trying to live in the moment of your characters so that you don't lose them. Um. And this style allowed non-method actors to have that experience on a much more healthy, sane level than method acting typically is. Yeah. But that's a little tangent. Um, So... Um... The there's not much in regards to sound and music in this film. Um, everything is very background. There there's not even much ambient noise. Um, it really grounds you to the characters and lets you live in the moment of the characters, just like the actors got to. Um, yeah, and that not too much to take away. Exactly. Um, which Castaway did kind of the same thing, and it it was um, super effective for that movie as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it takes down your budget a good bit, not having to... Yes. <laughs> uh, not having to deal with that. So I'm, I'm sure it was both a creative and economical decision when it came down to it. Plus, like, keeping it low on the sound adds to the intensity. Yeah, yeah. Because instead of going... Which, again, this movie did. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, it... You felt like you were on a razor's edge the entire time. In a good way. Um... 
And I know you've got some favorite quotes. Do you want to you want to uh, give us those? Well, the only quote that I really had that really stuck out to me was when Ron was talking to Eve about what he wanted out of life. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, uh, I mean, I got one one life, right? Mine. But fuck, I want somebody else's life sometimes. Sometimes I just feel like I'm fighting for a life. I just ain't got time to live. And mm -hmm. I want it to mean something. And it, it's, if you've ever dealt with chronic or terminal illness like you get it yeah it, it you, you just you never feel like you've got enough time yeah it's it's really rough and you know it, it it can be difficult to be grateful for the fact that you are alive um because to accept it, that death is part of your path, and you you got to be grateful that you are already feeling like you're living on borrowed time, especially when you get, hey, you've got 30 days to live, mm -hmm. and yeah. you manage to stretch it to seven years. Yeah, I mean that that is a testament to this man's seriousness for taking care of himself. Mm -hmm. He he was a lot of things that. You know, it, he was a lot of things, had a lot of weaknesses, but his tenacity, superhuman, man, like, just insane. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it, it just, it's great. Um, I... <laughs> So there's there's a point in the movie I think it's right after Rayon dies um that Eve and um Ron are talking and kind of get into an argument because Ron is so pissed off about Rayon being dead and um eve just screams he was my friend too yeah and it was that that was the scene that got my tears yeah yeah uh, I mean, you've grown up in the community, same as I have. I'm sure you've heard the stories from elders about what it was like to survive back then and watch your friends die. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Yeah. To see it in front of your eyes is just heartbreaking. I mean, you get it. Yeah, and and, and, and I mean, I've, I've lost a couple of friends. Um, not, not to AIDS, but... I lost one to a mysterious illness. Um, I've lost several to suicide. And I've got, you know, many, many people close to me who have autoimmune disorders and chronic illness is, um, as well as being in chronic pain and, and suffering with mental health myself. So I've that scene just resonated so strongly with my memories that it wasn't even a matter of putting myself in their shoes. I was being just remembering taken back. Yeah. So very well crafted scene. Um, and of course her acting was phenomenal. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were they were both on fire in that scene. Um, yeah. In 1992, when the screenwriter Craig Borton um, was talking to Ron about adapting his story into a movie, um, Ron reportedly responded. Man, I'd really like to have a film. I'd like people to have this information, and I'd like people to be educated on what I had to learn by the seat of my pants about government, pharmaceutical agencies, AIDS. I'd like to think it all meant something in the end.
And it did. It did. The the buyers I mean, it, clubs. It's taken a while to get it out there, but it's he made a difference then and there. Yeah. And you know it. it he uh he died that same year. Um. But it it just without which he did end up getting special permission to import drugs for personal use right before he died yeah yeah um and it, it wasn't enough to save him but it was enough to make the way for uh opening the path for other people in the united states yeah yeah um so just may have been an asshole, but he opened the doors. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and by the end of it, you know, he was he had shifted from just being in it for the money to really advocating and caring about all these other people who were in the same boat as him. Um, and it, it was, it was Rayon's death that really spurred that change on, uh, in the film. We, um, I wasn't able to... you do to... see it a little bit before Rayon dies. Like, yeah. to that point where, when Rayon gave him the money, Ron mm -hmm. hugged her. Yeah. Like, you could tell he was, like, he'd come around. Yeah. He'd learned that he was being an asshole. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, but he was still, until her death, he was still, you know, he was like, I want you guys to know the truth. I want you guys to have this access. You are going to have to pay me, but it's going to be a whole lot less than the hospital, and it's going to be way better for you. Um, but he stopped caring quite so much about the payment after her death. Yeah. That was really then his turning. Then it became point. about the people. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, it uh, another another aspect that I really want to cover real quickly is wardrobe. Um, you know, I mean, Ron was easy. You dress him up as a cowboy. Cowboy culture, cowboy style has not really changed. Um. The the cowboy hat was probably the more difficult thing to get a hold of, um, just because the hats kind of change styles. Um, but with Rayon, the um, the crew and Lido worked very close together to figure out high style items that rayon could have gotten on a very low budget um and uh and they would buy sometimes two of the same shirt one really big and one that fit so that as they gained weight in the film it showed by how well the clothes fit them um, yeah. and with that, they were able to avoid Leto and McConaughey getting, you know, having to do that massive lo weight loss and then whiplash their body into gaining weight in 25 days. Um, so yeah. that, that was clever on their point. And, um, they used a lot of things from the 70s. Um, because she was on a budget, so, you know, it was, it was like, okay, what could Rayon have thrifted? Probably 70s stuff. And they used, uh, Mark Bolan as a key reference point. Um... And I think that's, that's pretty much... That's pretty much it for the review portion. Um, we are going to be doing a separate facts podcast and video. Um, and we'll put the, the links 
for you uh, in the descriptions. Um, but yeah, it it really really good movie. Um, I've already watched it again. I think you have as well. Uh, I've watched it a couple times now, just doing background while doing notes. It's and every time I watch it, I just it's you keep getting the same feeling. Yeah, but you get the same feeling in like different places, like things that you didn't notice the first time around or even the second time around suddenly are obvious to you. Yeah. Um, so it is just it's a really, really good good film. It's a tough film. But it's worth watching. Not an easy watch. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any closing thoughts? Uh I think we've covered most of it that won't be covered in the facts part of it. Okay. Good deal. So uh those of you who are interested, definitely um click the links. Um Okay. Uh you can also find Jaded Phoenix Studios on Facebook, um, Patreon and Instagram as the website forward slash Jaded Phoenix Studios or on Twitter uh which is at jaded phoenix stu um i can be found on twitch as zan z a n b quinn and same thing with instagram mandy is on twitch and twitter uh twitch is firefly 325 and twitter is firefly 3255 um so Definitely let us know what you think. Um, if you want us to cover anything, you know, in particular, we've got a list, but we're happy to uh, to take, you know, recommendations as well. Um, and for those Give of you, us something new to watch. Yes, we're we're both big movie <laughs> buffs, and so we've got you know huge lists of things that we love and we've and we've watched, but uh, but nothing. Nothing particularly um, new, I guess, that, that, that comes to mind for us, uh, with the exception of this movie, which somehow we both missed, which is odd, um, and then a handful yeah. of others. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and uh, hope we see you on the next video.